This video was brought to you by our brand new channel, TLDR Business. Subscribe by clicking the link in the description. The UK is currently looking at an unprecedented energy crisis, with domestic energy prices expected to jump by at least 400% in the next few months. And energy prices have already pushed inflation to a 40-year high. Wages are struggling to keep pace, and both incumbent politicians and voters are terrified about what this might mean next. So in this video, we're going to be doing our best to try and explain this looming crisis and how it might be solved. Firstly, we're going to take a look at the crisis itself and how it might evolve over the coming months. Secondly, we're going to take a look at the government's current response. And thirdly, we're going to take a look at the various alternative proposals that are floating around at the moment and evaluate them. With that said, let's get into it. As we've covered in previous videos, energy prices are going up across Europe, thanks to both a post-pandemic spike in demand and Ukraine-related disruption to Russian energy. In fact, at the time of writing, European gas futures are at nearly 20 times their historic average, and electricity prices are also climbing to record highs. As a result, inflation in the EU is up by nearly 20%. And it's basically the same position in the UK as the rest of Europe. Year-on-year -year inflation is at a record 10.1%, driven by increases in food and fuel costs. And the energy price cap in the UK has already doubled when compared to two years ago. According to this current cap, introduced in April of this year, the average household will pay an annual electricity bill of nearly £2,000 pretty much double the figure from April 2020. For those of you who don't know, the energy price cap was first introduced by Theresa May in 2019, and it essentially puts an upper limit on how much energy suppliers can charge customers for electricity and gas. The cap is set by the UK's energy regulator, Ofgem, and it limits energy suppliers' profit margins to 1.9%. Nonetheless, rising wholesale energy prices and the administrative costs involved in bailing out certain suppliers mean that the cap is expected to rise steeply in the months ahead and stay high for the foreseeable future. Analysis by Cornwall Insights suggests that the price cap is on track to double again, reaching a high of £4,426 by March 2023, and stay above £3,500 for the next few years. In practice, that means that the average household energy bill will rise by about £3,000 when compared to a couple of years ago. And if that wasn't already bad enough, inflation is already at 10.1%, largely driven by fuel and food costs. That inflation rate is actually the highest of anywhere in the G7, and the highest year-on-year -year inflation for the UK since 1981. And just like increased energy bills, the Bank of England expects inflation to persist for the next few years too, peaking at 13% in October and only returning to the 2% target in July of 2024. And worryingly, the Bank of England's historic forecasts have reliably undershot reality, which means there's a good chance that inflation could stay even higher for even longer. Now, spiralling inflation means that real wages in the UK are expected to be 6.2% lower by 2023, according to analysis by the TUC, which will be the worst wage squeeze in modern British history, and the worst anywhere in the G7. Further analysis by the Financial Times suggests that this contraction will worst affect poorer households, with the poorest 10% on track to see a 17% decline in disposable income by April of 2023, compared to just a 3.5% drop for the richest 10%. You get the idea then, things aren't looking good in the UK, so what is the government currently doing about it? Well, so far, the government has promised a support package to ease the financial burden, although the contents of this support package have changed a few times. In its current form, every household will receive a £400 energy discount, which replaces the controversial £150 loan originally announced in February. 
with further support then going to low-income households, pensioners, and those on disability benefits. While all of this is clearly better than nothing, the average household would still need to find an additional £2,500 to cover their energy bills next year. And that's at the same time that their income is being eroded by rampant inflation. Now, unsurprisingly, polling suggests that most of the electorate consider the current support package to be insufficient. And as such, politicians have been scrambling to propose new and more generous measures. Which brings us onto the third and final part of this video, the alternative proposals. We're going to explain and evaluate proposals from three different politicians. Liz Truss, because she's almost definitely going to be the next Prime Minister, Keir Starmer, because he's the leader of the opposition, and Gordon Brown, because, well, while the actual politicians were on holiday, he was on the front line pushing policies. But let's start with Truss. Truss apparently wants to use tax cuts in order to ease the cost of living crisis. When it comes to energy bills, she said that she wants to temporarily suspend green levies, a miasma of tariffs and subsidies which currently account for about 8% of the average energy bill. Alongside this, she's also suggested that she cut fuel duty, which currently sits at 5%, and scrap the national insurance rise, recently introduced by Sunak to help fund the NHS and the government's new social care policy. But while this sort of stuff might be popular with the Conservative membership, it's not all that helpful. Green levies are only expected to account for about 5% of future energy bills, and while scrapping the national insurance rise would cut the average worker's tax bill by £170, it would only take £60 off for someone on the living wage, while doing absolutely nothing to help pensioners. All in all, as things stand at the moment, Truss's plans would do little to help the average households, and even less to help the poorest. So, on to Starmer. Labour published their cost of living plans a couple of weeks ago, and it essentially involves freezing the price cap for the next six months. Obviously, this would significantly help, well, basically every household, and is supported by 86% of all voters, including 85% of Conservative voters. However, it would be very expensive. Now, Labour have claimed that it would cost £29 billion, and that this will be paid for by an expansion of the windfall tax, redirecting the support that's been announced thus far, and savings that will come about thanks to a lower inflation rate. However, these figures are pretty optimistic. For starters, The Independent estimates that the true cost will be north of £30 billion, and the idea that the government would save £7 billion from a lower inflation rate is also pretty questionable. The argument here is that if inflation is lower, then it will bring down interest payments on the UK's inflation-indexed bonds, which account for about a quarter of all the UK government's borrowing. And while this is technically true, after the six-month freeze ends, inflation would just go straight back up again, bringing interest payments up with it. The £7.2 billion figure really relies on the freeze lasting longer. Now, the government could instead borrow more money to make up for the shortfall, but this all depends on how comfortable they are with increasing national debt at the moment. Finally, let's take a look at Gordon Brown's plan. Like Starmer, Brown has suggested expanding the windfall tax and also placing another tax on bankers' bonuses, which he claims would raise about £15 billion, enough to give about £2,000 to each of about 8 million low-income households. Brown has then suggested that the government scrap the price cap and try and negotiate lower prices with the energy companies. For those companies unable to provide lower prices, Brown recommends nationalising them, at least temporarily. And when he says energy companies, Brown seems to be referring to the energy suppliers, companies like Octopus, who just act as middlemen between energy producers and consumers, not the massive companies like Shell and BP, which own the energy infrastructure in the UK. However, energy suppliers' profits are already capped 1.9% of the price cap, and many have actually already gone bust, largely because the cap has prevented them from passing rising wholesale costs onto consumers. So while nationalising suppliers might allow the government to remove the profit element of the retail price entirely, and perhaps give it more fiscal flexibility, 
it wouldn't change the fundamental issue, which is that wholesale energy prices are now sky high. Now, this could maybe be changed if the government instead decided to privatize the UK's energy infrastructure itself. But, well, that would cost hundreds of billions of pounds and would take many, many years. Clearly then, even those at the heart of politics don't have the most clear or coherent ideas, and they definitely can't agree to one strategy. But whose do you agree with? What do you think we should do next? Comment your thoughts down below. And if you want more videos like this, the interplay of business, politics, culture, and society, then be sure to subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel, TLDR Business. That's our brand new YouTube channel where we'll be unpacking the politics of business, the people, companies, and brands who often hold more power over our world than elected politicians. Now, that channel is brand new, so we only have one video live right now about the secret economics of porn and the rules that two secretive companies make that dictate the porn that can and cannot be made. However, we also have a load of other new videos coming soon, including a breakdown of the ideology of Elon Musk and what he stands for, a video unpacking how Apple spends its huge revenues and their $200 billion bank balance, as well as a video on TikTok and if they're the ultimate Chinese propaganda tool. And all of those videos will be out very soon, so click the link below, watch the official channel trailer, and subscribe to be notified when they're live.